Hi. I am still going to prepare a course, a short course on the five kosha. The five kosha are an ancient knowledge uh, that came from the Upanishad where they speak about the five sheets or five body sheets. The gross body, physical body is the one that we mostly identify with because it can be seen physically, but it is the least uh, of ourself. It is it, it is a further, further way of our true self. Our true self is formless awareness. And um, the five sheet, when seen through the proper appearance, the order of appearance of our direct experience, they bring a lot of clarity about how to integrate self-realization and, and function in our human experience from that knowing. But before I go into this, I just felt like bringing something here about some word that I heard before from another teacher, which made a lot of sense now that this knowledge or knowing has gone deeper. I, I like to um, point to movement and non-movement with this word. So if I, if I say pure knowledge, There is no movement there, just knowledge, even not knowledge of existence is not even born. It's just direct knowledge. It's really still silent. There is no movement there. So we could, we could point to our true nature to it's just present, it's here, direct knowledge. I could add the word of existence, but even that we're getting into movement. So direct knowledge. And then another word that we can bring is knowing, where nothing is known. Knowing is the non-dual wisdom body where everything arises and dissolves equally. There is no position taken yet it's just knowing knowing of existence knowing just knowing so there are everything is registered in awareness directly without there being a person in between what is seen and the seeing so it's directly known or knowing so knowing with the understanding of the five kosha is the wisdom body, the non-dual awareness where everything is registered without opinion. So there is a neutral access to neutrality from there. And from this neutral place, it's impersonal. It's not yet personalized. Our experience is just known through knowing. That's the non-dual sheet where intu intuition and wisdom arises are more accessible because it's not yet covered by the noise of the mental body sheet, which is I know. When I know something, now I have taken a position. So now I have bitten the apple of knowledge which has taken me further away from God because now I am a person and I know something. And that comes with a price. That comes with the price of positionality. And a position is always in opposition to another position. So there is, so, so, so with the mental realm, now we've gone down to more limited perspective of I know. When I believe that I know, if I know that something is not going to work, then I may fear to try to do it. If I know that I have not as much value as someone else, then I will feel the vibration of that. But all of that is just a limited perception from us being 
looking through the mental realm of positionality. So any positionality is just a limitation. Any positionality cannot be absolute truth. So it is an experience. It's undeniable that we do have the experience of our position or taking position about anything. But when it's discovered to be illusory, then there is more resting in simply knowing without nothing being known, without a positionality taken. So this, this describe also the order of appearance in our direct experience of the body sheet, where there is just direct knowledge without attribute. Then knowing without any position taken. There is less movement there. And I know, now we go to, I know this and I know that, and I describe this and I describe that. And then I feel the vibration of these thoughts in the emotional body, which is the fourth filter. So the emotional body will, will reflect from or through which filter we're filtering reality. If I am residing in knowing without taking any position, being neutral and open, then I the emotional body will reflect higher vibration frequency because I reside in being knowing without anything being known or described. Where everything arises and dissolves equally, there is access to harmony, beauty, love, spaciousness, compassion, all of these higher vibrations are present when there is no position taken. And if I filter everything through the mind and I constantly position myself, me and others, this and that, that creates more turmoil. And in my experience, what happened was I was so much in there, the, the mind exhausted itself and just gave up. I can't. There's nothing I can't. There was a, 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 a distress that was arising of breaking down this falling apart of I can't solve this. And, and I can't understand and I can't manage. And, I, and the mind was seen to be limited and it kind of just surrendered. And through that surrendering, the realization that what we are is prior to thinking about who or what we are. Thinking about existence is not existence. Existence exists without thoughts. Without thought, existence is already here. And the emotional body is the fourth sheet and the physical body is the fifth sheet and the physical body will reflect the state of the emotional body. If there are contracted energy, there might be some chronic pain or a lot of turbulent emotion. There will be a felt sense of vibration in the body, which are more contracted than the lightness and the spaciousness of just residing in the wisdom body. So the physical body will re reflect. Also from which filter we are filtering reality. And when I say that the mind is optional, it doesn't mean that I'm not using the mind because obviously we need the mind to function in the world. I need the mind to know that I can drink a glass of water, that I have my keys and I put them in the ignition to turn, to, to drive the car or to ride a bike, to speak here, to communicate, obviously, I need to access the mind. And that's the beauty of existence that we have access to that. We have access to the mind. The problem is when the mind starts to tell me who I am and I am residing under the mind. And then I believe all the thought about me and about the world. Then I reside in a very contracted lens where there is fear 
and a need for survival and a need to be approved and a need to be loved and all of these contractions that arises with the separate me. If I stop believing the mind about me and who I am, I can reside before mind in my nature and use the mind. So the mind is a servant, but it's not a very good master. So it's a good servant if I can drop the thought that describe this person, that person, this event, me and others and all the turmoil reside in wisdom body, neutral and open non-dual awareness while using the mind to cook, to drive, to live, to create, to have inspiration, to we are here, infinite being, infinite potentiality to taste the Garden of Eden, to reside in the Garden of Eden and to enjoy life, to love, to participate, to have relationship with anyone around us, to be together, to enjoy the relative experience, which would could not exist if there was no mind. There would be nothing if there was just the absolute. So both are married together. Both are the whole. So this nothing is denied. The mind is not wrong. It's just that it's not pleasant when the mind is adopted to describe who I am, who this other being is, and then it creates division and separation and it creates a lot of suffering. And this is what is reflected in this actual world right now. There's a lot of division and separation, but it's only a case of mistaken identity because we are all infinite being. We all have access to residing in wisdom, neutral and open unity. And when, when we can reside there, we are neutral being. So polarity dies in us because we are not fueling it anymore. And if everyone stopped fueling duality, there wouldn't be any war. There wouldn't be any need to defend ourselves, to prove ourselves, to possess, to accumulate. It doesn't deny the need to have a safe physical environment, to have enough food, to be safe. It doesn't deny that need, but there would be less accumulation, less defending, less possession, more collaboration, more love, more compassion. So that's that's what I, I felt like uh, like sharing today. And the five kosha are a model that is really is a model that is really, really simple and that can it can help the mind surrender or align to this truth because the mind loved to rest too so this model was supportive in my own integration of realizing my true nature so i will soon uh, create a course that i will put on a community based course platform and uh, stay put it's going to appear at some point on my website or i may share it here on YouTube. Okay, so reside in knowing <laughs> without anything being known. And that is why we hear um, the, the in the religion, there is this um, um, sharing about uh, biting the apple of knowledge. And as soon as I bite the apple of knowledge, it doesn't taste really good because I, I leave the Garden of Eden, because now I know something. And if I know something, I have to do something and I have to take charge or control. And all of these come with that, with that lens. So knowing without taking any position will require trust and surrendering the mind. 
and trust to be guided by intuition because each and every one of us has a direct link to infinite intelligence because this is what we are. So in our relative life, this link to infinite in intelligence is the wisdom body, is the intuition. In my understanding, the first, the most important purpose is to realize our true nature. And then our secondary purpose may appear with that by following intuition. What is it that brings me joy? What is it that I feel to create? What is it that I would love to experience and then residing in the wisdom body listening to intuition will reveal this secondary purpose and it's not a search for purpose mind is searching for purpose and there is in reality in ultimate reality no purpose everything is unfolding spontaneously and yet in our human experience with the integration of the of the self-realization my feeling is that unlimitedness is to create to live from that place and to have not it's not even an access because high vibration frequency are already present when the mind is not defining describing judging so when that's when we reside in the wisdom body we're not um brought into the turbulence of the mind which is always up and down and and mostly down <laughs> and even the eye are just like artificial and residing in beingness is is the real deal is the real thing <laughs> there's one thing so so that 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 wisdom sheet is where there is more love and and higher frequency vibration experience enter our reality because we reside there and it's a it's a vibration frequency match life is an energy game so if we're constantly depleted by low vibration energy because we filter everything through thinking there there can be lots of suffering and less energy and less creativity because we are always compelled to try to solve problem and I'm telling that not by judging it because I, I was in there for a very long time. And in the end, it became too much. And that's how it just exploded in my experiences, kind of how I feel it happened. And it's not the same. Everyone has this different, it's infinite. So I'm not saying that this is a recipe it's possible to realize our true nature or reside in the wisdom body without having to go through these deep suffering. So do not take this as a truth. It's just how it just appear here, but it's infinitely different for everyone. So I'd say the only thing that is really close to our true nature is our own intuition and no one has any access to that other than ourself so i don't have access to your intuition so i can't tell you what to do the only thing is to follow your own intuition and be your own sovereign being and remove your power from the turbulence of the mind if you can if you can't then just embrace the feeling and it, it's going to dissolve and bring a lot of love a lot of love to your character a lot of love to your personality so that it feels safe and it can trust life surrendering the mind and then trusting life trusting the wisdom and intuition and it's a it's a beautiful adventure and it's in my experience always refining there is no no end point and at the same time paradoxically there's nowhere to go there is only this moment which is already perfect all and spontaneous all right bye bye thank you for watching subscribe to the channel if you want to uh, support it okay bye bye